Yo, people are divided into two major camps. Those who think that all life evolved from non-living matter and lower life forms, and those who think that God created everything as is according to the Bible account. I have a problem with both camps, so I offer a third position. This issue is too complicated to explain in a short video, so if you're interested, see my WordPress posts on this subject. 1. Both camps base their positions on their own agenda. Most creationists gather information to support the Bible instead of impartial research. Most evolutionists gather information to counter conservative religion instead of impartial research. As Richard Dawkins said, Darwin made it possible to be an intellectually fulfilled atheist. Neither camp prioritizes the scientific method, which consists of systematic observation, measurement, and experiment. And I, admittedly, uh, sometimes that's not possible as far as this uh, subject goes. Uh, what that is, is observational science. And while the biblical creation account is wholly unscientific, neo-Darwinism and abiogenesis violate numerous scientific laws, such as Newton's laws and Mendelism. Yet both camps have the audacity to tell you exactly how everything came about in great detail. I, however, am wise enough to admit that there are too many things I cannot know about life's origin and development. Two, most creationists believe that everyone came from Adam and Eve. Some say it happened only 6,000 years ago. Most evolutionists uh, believe uh, life evolved over a billion years in all humans came from a common ancestor in Africa. Neither camp has adequate archaeological documentation. The Garden of Eden probably did not exist, and the continent of Africa probably did not exist as is uh, due to continental uh, drift. Uh, there, there could have been only one giant continent years ago, or even, or even 100 smaller continents. And both camps promote monogenism, a, a theory of human origins which posits a common descent for all human races. In consequence, many people try to force all the races into one brotherhood which leads to endless conflict. I, however, support polygenism, a theory of human origins which posits the view that the human races are of different origins. This idea has lots of evidence to support it. Three, are we animals? Yes and no. Creationists overemphasize our non-animal nature, breeding arrogance and disassociation from our biological needs. Our thoughts and actions are dictated by our particular bi biology to a high degree, however. See determinism on Wikipedia. Evolutionists overemphasize our animal nature to disassociate us from our higher behavioral and moral responsibility due to our advanced brains and free will. So understand the complete uh, person for. Most creationists focus on defeating and destroying competitors as they focus on the bloody Old Testament. Uh, uh, most evolutionists focus on defeating and destroying competitors too, since they focus on the survival of the fittest principle. Yet Christians should know that Christ fulfilled the Old Testament so they should focus on the uplifting New Testament instead. See Hebrews 7, 18 and 19, and Hebrews 8, 13. And evolutionists should know that the principle of cooperation is much more important to survival than brutal battles for supremacy within the evolutionary model. See cooperation, evolution, on Wikipedia and symbiosis on Wikipedia 5. As for evolutionists, evolutionary biologists and cosmologists have wasted massive amounts of taxpayer money in their search for a purely natural and scientific explanation of life's origin. In this way, evolutionists have been far worse than creationists. But creationists are also guilty of wasting money by spending a massive amount to create a replica of the supposed Noah's Ark in the Creationist Museum, which story involves numerous impossibilities. Consider that it would be impossible for the Ark to house all the animal species. Defenders of the story respond that there were only a small fraction of the species alive today that are alive today since the species had not yet diversified and that the animals taken aboard were baby animals. Yet the story says that 
uh, they were in the ark for over a year. So every single animal would have needed a year's supply of food and would have been going to the bathroom on the ark for a year. Also, animals become fully grown in about just about a year. So uh, just one Argentinosaurus uh, would weigh 200,000 pounds or 91,000 kilograms and would be 120 feet long or 37 meters. Sauroposidans were 55 feet tall or 17 meters while the ark was said to be only 45 feet tall or 14 meters. And the vast majority of, of plant life, including all trees, cannot live underwater for long. They would have certainly died from overwatering. Six, creationists believe that God created all forms of life, which life humans uh, are only a small part of. Even today, insects are the most predominant. Evolutionists believe that numerous animals, including fish, lizards, rodents, tree-dwelling animals, and apes were our ancestors and part of our family tree. So regardless of your view of origins, animals should be certainly revered in the highest degree. Yet most uh, people on both sides are extremely hypocritical. Most people, regardless of their view of origins, are happy to engorge themselves on animals that were, that were kept in terrible conditions and enjoy luxury products that came at the cost of deforestation, air pollution, water pollution, land pollution, noise pollution, the extinction of species, and strip mining, a true rape of the earth. So don't be an evil idiot. Instead, do everything in your power to counteract this problem. First, if you see any animal abuse or neglect, contact the proper authorities or rescue the animals yourself. Second, find out which companies are involved in harming animals and the environment. Stop doing business with them and tell others. You may also want to find out if any groups in your area plant greenery and support wildlife, which you may join. And if you're going to stay single and have no children, leave a will and dedicate and donate all your money to animal rights and environmental groups, such as anti-abuse groups, uh, breeding groups for animals, no-kill animal shelters, groups dedicated to preserving our ecosystem, groups that sponsor endangered species, and humane farming associations, and research beforehand to find out which groups are legitimate. If I die single, I won't even waste money on a funeral. I'll try to leave as much money as possible to our wonderful animals and their habitats. Finally, don't just go along with the crowd. Think for yourself!